our new guest here, Paul Biancardi, the National Recruiting Director for ESPN. And, uh, of course, as we come into this segment with the highlight of Isaiah Joe, best shooter in the country, and he just made the announcement that a few days ago he's going to be back with Arkansas. So, uh, Coach B, good to have you on today. How's it going? How are you? I'm good. Thank- I'm great. Thank you for guys for having me. I love talking basketball. Absolutely. Yeah, we like talking basketball, too, um, instead of a whole bunch of of ifs, you know, if we're going to play and all that kind of stuff. So um, let, let's ask about this recruiting dead period, which I think feels like it's going to go on indefinitely. Uh, Richard Davenport, who I know is a friend of yours, had told me that, that he believes this, this dead period may last until a vaccine is found. So I wonder what you think in the people that you've spoken to as they've had to adjust to a completely different way to recruit, how long do you think the NCAA will continue to go with this dead recruiting period? Well, I don't know if I can put a finite date on it. I think what happens is each month as we approach, you know, the first of every month, they look ahead to what it can be like in the month ahead or the next two months. And each time they get to a certain period, they continue to extend the dead period. Now we're we're right now till August 31st. Um, I mean, it, I think it's a good chance it's going to get delayed September and October. November technically starts the high school season throughout the country. Each state starts at a different time. Each school, private, uh, independent, or public, they have different time periods when they start. You know, if they start. So it's hard to know when it will be finite to say, okay, this is when it's going to end. Now, what Richard said could possibly be true. I didn't hear that one yet. And uh, but I, I, I just think they're going to take it every in every two weeks to a month cycle and then evaluate whether or not the coaches can go out. I guess before coaches can go out, you got to have got to let students on campus too at the same time for for college purposes. And some of these schools, districts, as we know throughout the country are going to be taking classes online. So that, that obviously throws a, a curve into it. I don't know. A lot of, a lot of uh, experts that, that focus on football recruiting have, have thought that this could be, you know, this year, next year, um, the, the toughest classes to, to, to figure out, you know, to, to scout. And, and the thought is they'll, there, there may be more swings and misses on on recruits than before because you can't actually have your eyes on them they haven't been watching them in seven on sevens and all the summer camps and everything and i wonder if you think that there could be the same impact upon the sport of college basketball because in the changes of the ways that coaches have to recruit and the ways that recruits get their highlights in front of coaches no question about it that's In basketball, the class of 2021 will be the most under-evaluated class that I've ever seen that I even know of in my time, and that's 25 years plus. Uh, If you go back in time, you know, recruiting, you could go out a lot more in the past. As years have went on, the NCAA has cut down the evaluation and recruiting window. So now with the COVID situation, everything got shut down, I believe, was around March 10th. Uh, prior to that, if coaches were out during their season, which is difficult to do, but some staff get out there during the season, especially at Christmas events or Thanksgiving events where there are large tournaments. There was some scouting going on prior to COVID, and I think those kids will continue to get recruited. Uh, and some of those kids have made commitments already for, for in the class of 2021. It's all the other guys that haven't been fully evaluated in 2021 that haven't been seen uh, or not seen enough, it, they have to be real patient. You're going to see a lot of late recruiting going on April, May, June, I, I think all the way July and August for next September. You can't just do it on film alone. Film is a support supporting tool. And, uh, you know, for a kid to be evaluated solely on film, and not be offered, and to be offered a scholarship, I, I would find that hard to believe. I, I think the kids who have committed now, coaches have seen them, but there hasn't been official visits, and a lot of kids are comfortable with the virtual recruiting, um, but they will visit that school 
when the time comes, but they're, they're comfortable making a commitment uh, before that. Speaking to Paul being Cardi here on halftime, uh, Paul, what do you think with the new associate head coach here at the university of Arkansas and David Patrick, what kind of pipeline do you think that he could open up to the university of Arkansas with Australian talent making its way to Fayetteville? Well, we know what he did uh, with Ben Simmons and LSU, and, and that's all you have to say. Uh, ben was one of the best high school players that I've ever had a chance to evaluate and rank in my 12 years here at ESPN. When he stepped on the court at Montverde as a sophomore, I mean, you could see the talent. You could see the ability to be a star right away as a sophomore. Uh, David Patrick has a long resume in the game. It's just not Australia, uh, though he is connected there and He'll be able to bring some some kids over to it, hopefully when time is right to visit, to visit. Uh, but, you know, he's been a head coach now, and uh, he's been a longtime assistant. He was at St. Mary's. He was at LSU. So I, I think he brings experience and chemistry because him and Coach Musk working together at LSU, uh, you, you can't say enough about what staff chemistry can do to a program. It can, it can really you know, help expedite all the, all the goals that you're trying to reach. When you look at how this Arkansas roster is set up, I mean, you have the several graduate transfers that came in. You have the four stud freshmen that Arkansas signed uh, right before the the, the 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 semester came about. I want to focus more on the freshmen, though, for a sec, because right now this roster is singing at about 11, 12, 13 guys that could p- potentially see playing time. Is there a scenario in your mind, because I, I don't see it happening, but you're the recruiting expert, and I want to ask your opinion. Could any of these four freshmen – be redshirted this year just to preserve their eligibility, or do you think this is going to be a year where you see all four of these freshmen get lots of playing time? Yeah, well, I mean, that's a great question about that because what happens is you have guys that are ready to play as freshmen, and then you have guys that are graduate transfers coming in like uh, Justin Smith and and Vance Jackson. But I I don't know if any of those freshmen need to be redshirted. I think that's something Coach Musselman and his staff would – would probably address with that player uh, come in the fall. I think all these guys can contribute. I, I really do. They're they're you know it's a top five recruiting class according to us at ESPN. All these guys can contribute in different ways, and, and I think this season with so many unknowns, I don't know if you want to make a decision like that uh, quickly. And uh, I think you go into the season thinking everyone can help you. You know, depth is a wonderful thing. And uh, Coach Musk can play, you know, eight, nine guys, I think, on this year's team coming up. They're a top 25, 30, 35 team, in my opinion. Uh, So if you're going to be that good of a team, I think you need to have a strong bench. You brought up the playing time aspect with possibly an eight, nine, ten-man team lineup. How, In your mind, being a former coach and how – and obviously Eric must have been being successful himself. How is that going to be divvied out as far as minutes? Do you think it's just going to be as simple as practice time – or can the, can you work out a rotation to where everybody gets maybe not necessarily equal minutes, but everybody gets a little piece of the pie and everybody's happy? Yeah, I don't think you're going to get equal minutes. Um, some programs do that. You look at Florida State, they play 10 guys, sometimes 11. And when you look at Florida State's minutes, you know, they're double-figure minutes in the high teens to the low 20s. I think in this case, I mean, when you look at you know, Isaiah Joe and you look at Justin Smith and Vance Jackson, those guys are going to get, you know, as many minutes as they can handle. Then you got uh, Jalen Tate, Moses Moody, I think should be a starter, could be a starter in that group. Uh, so I think what will happen is I think you can get comfortable with eight, but I think you always have that ninth man ready to go. Maybe he's a guy who can get, you know, five or ten minutes into a game. It, we don't know what injuries. And, and with COVID, what happens if somebody gets tested positive now? Nobody's even talking about that. And that person has to sit out for an extended period of time. So I don't think this is a year to redshirt if I was a head coach in college, in my opinion. I think college basketball might be a little difficult. Now I'm going to get into the COVID stuff a little here. I think it might be difficult to to to, to make it through an entire season, maybe easier than college football just because there aren't a, that many players on the court and a lot fewer players on a basketball team than on football. But on the nature of the sport, on the idea that, I don't think you can create a bubble around college basketball teams the way the NBA has. Uh, I've got some trepidation as to what this college basketball season could look like. And, of course, a lot of it has to do with, you know, the infection rate and the numbers, hopefully, and the the curve flattening and starting to go downward. 
But uh, I think we could see a situation where, just like the college football season has changed and is being pushed back in some cases, we could see the same thing with college basketball, too. You've been a head coach. Do you think that it's possible to create some sort of a bubble around a college basketball team? I think it would be hard. I mean, you're talking about a bubble for a conference to have conference games, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, first of all, that's really going to be expensive. I, I was told the NBA bubble and uh, approximately was $150 million wow. uh, for this time in the bubble. And so I, I don't know who's going to pay that bill on, on the college level. Now, I don't think it'll be as much, but I, I think it would be really difficult to have bubbles. Um, that, that My first thought is that wouldn't happen. My, my thought for a schedule, whenever that schedule was to initiate, whether they go early or they wait and go late, conference games I understand. I, I'm more into proximity games. You know, For example, when you look at um, – the state of uh, Wisconsin. You have uh, Marquette in Wisconsin. That's a game that should be played. That, that's a bus trip. Uh, there's not a lot of travel. Uh, it, it's easy to do. And even though they're in different conferences, because when you look at, for example, even the Big Ten, Wisconsin going to Rutgers, you're not busting that. you got to fly wow. that. So I, I don't know if conference games are the complete answer in basketball, uh, because some of the conference with the conference realignment has really spread out conferences. I, I'd like to see the schedule made up this year based on proximity where there's less travel involved and, and maybe less playing trips. Let's close out on a thought of, um, you know, the, these last few months have been very interesting for a number of reasons, and one of them has been the, 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 the how student-athletes now are feeling, I think, empowered uh, to uh, communicate their thoughts on social issues, holding coaches accountable for the way they communicate to their players. We're seeing this in college football a lot. And I wonder, for college basketball, do you think that the high school players, the high school athletes, might feel the same way? And so they're paying attention to the way that these head coaches are dealing with their players and the way that they are allowed to um, be vocal, use their platform, so to speak, about social issues. Yeah, I think basketball is going to do the same thing when the time comes as we approach the season. I mean, we're in a day and age where people should be able to express themselves and and they have to act based on how they feel. Uh, And there's a lot of feelings going on in the world right now. COVID has created, you know, some mental health issues as well as physical health issues. And and the kids want to make sure and, and their parents rightfully so, that they're in a situation where they can be as safe as possible. And uh, with all the social injustice that has went on recently and the killings and uh, how that's been brought to light and, and going to stay that way for a long time until there's change, that, that's creating another feeling uh, amongst today's adolescents. So this is not going to go away uh, in terms of players being united, and hopefully they'll, they'll get united on topics that are important and serious and for the betterment of the world, and at the same time get to play the sport that they love. It's always fun talking basketball with you, uh, Paul. I really appreciate your time, and uh, hopefully as we approach basketball season, hopefully it starts on time and we can do this again. Thanks again. Thanks, Paul. All right. Thank you guys for having me. Absolutely. Coach Paul Biancardi, he is the director of ESPN National Basketball Recruiting. And uh, it's good to have him on today. Uh, you think we're going to start basketball on time? I mean, now here it is. You're three months away. You're like three months away from when the season should begin. There's no conversation about the winter sports. One thing at a time, right? Figure out football season, then figure out basketball. That's but what I'm thinking. The clock's yeah. already ticking, man. It really is. I. It's too early to tell. I. It seems to me it'd be easier to put on winter sports than it would be college football. That's just me. I think football is the toughest of all of the Absolutely. college sports to put on. Because you've already seen, if you could do the bubble, which bubble side or not, basketball can get done.